All right, class, uh, welcome back to English 1301, Expository English Composition. Class, let's talk about <clears throat> our upcoming deadlines that we have. And so thus, we will go to the course policies and calendar that we've been working with this semester. So class on for sections 21416, and these are my hybrid classes that meet Monday, Wednesday, and Friday um, in different groups due to social distancing once a week. And section 21419 and 21437, the hybrid Monday and Wednesday, Friday class, <clears throat> once again, <coughs> excuse me, your deadline for turning in this essay is once again going to be February 9th. So I'm going to help you with that. I'm not going to talk about that. It says hand in your essay in your <coughs> pocket folder, but once again, we'll be doing this virtually because of this now being an online, or I should say during the pandemic, a hybrid class. And I can't be teach, uh, touching a bunch of paper due to the college regulations. So you're going to turn that in on February 9th. Now let's talk about what you're going to turn in. Once again, CRN sections 21416, 21419, and 21437. <clears throat> For my one online class this semester, <clears throat> which would, <clears throat> excuse me class, I got a few allergies which would be uh, normally a Tuesday and Thursday class, but we're not meeting. Uh, it's a, an online class. Your deadline, once again, for that class is the 15th. So it's staggered. It's a few days later after, and that's section 20755 of English 1301. That will be the 15th for you guys. So, what are you going to turn in that day? It's going to be simple. Through Blackboard messages, you will put, uh, let me know who you are. We're going to talk about that. And then together, just send me three documents. You're going to send me a rough draft. And I'll talk about the way it's going to be formatted. You're going to send me your final draft, which I'm going to show you that format right now. Plus, I will send you uh, an actual essay under handouts that shows that formatting. And then from the writing center, from the writing center, you're going to get a verification letting me know that you win. So three documents. Rough draft, writing center verification, your final draft, of which I will sit down and grade and evaluate, okay? Send them just simply through Blackboard messages. Send them as a Microsoft Word attachment. Those are the things that I can pull up. And then I'll grade those and give them back to you, class. Generally, what it takes is when I receive a set of essays for my classes coming in, I can have those back two weeks from the time you turn them in, all right? And during that time, we'll be moving on to our next major uh, subject of study. But I'll get those back within two weeks. Never sooner, very seldom ever later, okay? But generally right on the time. Or they may come back a little sooner. But you got to give me two weeks because, class, one of the things that I'm going to do with these essays is I'm going to grade them. All right, take a lot of time to grade them to help you. So once again, you can see where you are as a writer and I can help you with these things. So, you know the deadline, you know how to turn it in. I'm gonna show you right now what your essay is basically gonna look like. And then I will <clears throat> class attach this to your handouts, perfectly formatted MLA essay. 
but this is what it's going to look like. And this sort of essay class has looked this way for a hundred years in college. All right. Let's look over this. Okay. And we'll talk. I'll, I'll attach this and show you, but I'll walk you through it. Up here in the left hand corner, your name, English 1301, the section number of the class, spring 2022, and then your last name. All up in the upper left hand corner, single spaced. Then you put your machine on double spacing, double space down, center your title, underline your title. You're going to use, according to my course policies and calendar, either Times New Roman or Times Roman or Courier type. 12 point typeface. All right, I'll keep working with you if I need to kick things back until you get this. Then, class, first paragraph, indent. Spacing between the paragraph, no extra spacing between double spacing. You let your essay roll. Simple as that, and you let it roll. Each time that you're going to start a new paragraph, indent. Indent. Next page that you go to, if you have a two or three pages, top right-hand corner, your name, colon, page two, page three, your name, colon, page three. Let the essay roll from there. It's very simple once you get it. So that's what it's going to look like. That's, once again, what an essay looked like 50 years ago. It's going to be the same today. All right. Modern Language Association style for turning in a college-level essay. All right. Just like that. And you're just going to turn it in virtually as a Microsoft Word document. Okay. And I'll attach this. Um this version of this so you can look at it before you turn your essay and say does it look this way all right does it work this way very good so we've gone over your deadline we've gone over how you're going to turn in your essay we went over the ingredients the three ingredients you're going to need for your essay we're talking about the format for your essay and i'll attach that and now class what i want to do is let's get into this course policies and calendar to look a little bit about the homework all right one of the things that says <coughs> here that you'll want to be in the process of doing is on the course policies and calendar planning and drafting but before you do that once again you're going to be writing a draft for me okay make sure that you have taken sufficient notes so when you go to write your profile, I mean your memoir, go back and look at Gary Soto. Go back and look at Annie Dillard throwing snowballs. Okay, those are the two major essays that we um, have. And then there's uh, the other readings that illuminate all of this material. And I'm going to talk about that today to help you. But your, your situation is, class, once again, 700 to 1,000 words your essay is going to be. How do you get in? How do you get out? How do you take care of what you need to in 700 to 1,000 words? I'm going to illuminate the handouts that we had and that we've been talking about and, and uh, from uh, <clears throat> some aspects of how I've taught this over the years. So all those handouts I have, if you've <coughs> read those and digested those, you're in good shape. My job as a professor is to help you more. Writing from recall, what's the challenge when you're writing these drafts that you can have? The major challenge writers confront when they write from recall is focus. How are you going to focus your essay? Okay. You notice that uh, Annie Dillard's was very tightly focused. She dropped us in to that maybe two hour period particular place particular time a memory of being 10 years old in pittsburgh throwing snowballs got in got out let us know what she learned gary soto a little bit of 
broader space and time. Still very focused, but he took us to, once again, the Valley Tire Factory. Valley Fire Tire Factory. We learn about being a 17-year-old runaway. Drops us into it. Details into the situation. A memoir. And then he, at the end, lets us know what he learned. Okay, What he learned about culture, about history, about his people, about other people, about lives being trapped, about what he wanted for the future, okay? A very powerful personal experience is writers often have difficulty making objective decisions <coughs> about, excuse me, the most effective method of presenting the experience to the readers. On the one hand, it is tempting to include every detail that you come to mind. On the other hand, because the experience is so familiar, a writer may overlook the details that make the story's relevance clear to readers. So how do we start in? How do, first thing you start in class is by, once again, free writing. Free writing. Uh, I don't know how you can draft. Uh, I usually still like to draft. There's different ways I, I would do it. I, you know, I was trained to be fast in college and at the university in journalism to write fast on the computer. Okay, but then there's times too where I thought over the years and what happened after school is a lot of the free writing I do and and before the university too, you do it at paper and pen, right? And you keep the pen moving as fast as you can get it moving, you know, free write. Just trying to get it down on the page. Trying to get it down on the page, not thinking, you know, about whether you're writing correctly or whether you're making a mistake and just hitting it fast, class, hitting it fast. And then, um, <clears throat> you know, you see what you have down. Set your time for 15 or 20 minutes once again. And then hit it, you know, let it rip, let it rip, let it rip. Try and get as much, without being too analytical and thinking about things like, oh, I may have made a mistake, or my grammar may not be very good, or my English isn't, you know, very, forget about all that stuff. And just trying to get words on a page, words on a page. This is in a journal of mine. <clears throat> not the latest one, but one from maybe, I don't know, six months ago, class. And so, get it down. You know, you're trying to get get words on the page. And, and just write as fast as you can and try and free yourself up to get the basis of the memories down and the details down. We always go back, class, and, and, and work on rewriting and editing and and revision 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 but once again we're just trying to get words down on the page right in the beginning and because without words on the page class we have nothing right so be good to yourself be kind to yourself say you know what i'm gonna try i'm gonna knock this essay out you know mr welsh is writing i'm gonna write i'm gonna try and get a decent essay down Get them on the page. Get it on the page. Get it on the page, class. Free write. Don't stop. Don't censor yourself. Be good to yourself. Say, you know what? I'm a work in progress. I am a work in progress. And then, once again, wherever we take it from there. But we need to get, you know, some sort of as aspect of a <coughs> draft down. So... You know, you generate your ideas, be thinking loosely about what it is you want to write, and then class, you know, we hit it, we hit it, we hit it, you know, once again, get it down, get it down, uh, write, 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 get it down, get it down, get those words, once again, on the page, get those words, class, on the page. All right, so, and then, you know, you may be thinking about well, this one I want to write about. And then sketch it out as best as you can. Class, you may find that the 
minute you are asked to write about a significant experience in your life, which these need to be, the very incident will flash to mind. But most writers, though, will need a little more time to shake down their memory. So you're in the thing now of the point of class, once again, shaking down your memory. Shake, we shake down our memories, once again. Maybe sometimes when you're thinking about one thing, another thing will pop into mind. Students tell me. Okay, another thing will pop into mind. Probably what will come to you first will be recent memories, but give long ago memories. Class. Time to surface. Two. Be ready for any recollections that well up unexpectedly. So you may be thinking about one thing and then all of a sudden something else pops in. That's be we don't know how that happens, but it can happen. And then that could be the start of your paper. And once again, brainstorming simply class is is a way to um you know jog your memory. Jog your memory. So brainstorming is a good way to jog your memory. When you brainstorm, you try to come with up as many ideas you can. Without any thought, class, for the form. Without any thought whatsoever to what the form is. Just saying, you know what, I'm trying, I'm getting it down. I'm going to get it down. I'm going to get it down. I'm going to go fast. And then once again, class, I guarantee you it always happens. You'll go back and say, did I write that? Did I write that? Was it me who just came up with that, class? And sometimes, yes say always yes but sometimes there's kind of a mystery involved in it did you try you possibly what we're trying to do is transcend the head and get into the heart and write from the heart class and that's what happens when when we when we class when we brainstorm okay brainstorm brainstorming trying to get things down class now i'm going to give you an example of some questions that i want you to ask yourself and take notes on and this could be the start of the paper. Ask yourself this. Did you ever break an important rule or rebel against authority? Did you ever break an important rule or rebel against authority? Did you learn anything from this, from your actions? What could be breaking an important rule? Maybe did you in school and you got caught. Can, can you tell us that day and time? Could you write about that? Could you drop us into it? What happened? How about something like stealing a car or borrowing your parents' car? What happened that night when that happened? It didn't go so well. Did you ever break an important rule? Maybe uh, you shouldn't be underage drinking class and something happened that night uh, that um, could have been catastrophic. Did something big happen? I'm not advocating these sort of things but you broke the rules or you rebelled against authority. How about something for some people, once again, maybe you had an experience with marijuana, right? Marijuana's not a big deal to some people. Some people, it's a very big deal. Some people, it changed the whole trajectory of their lives. Some people can handle it. Some people can't. I know people back home where I grew up in L.A., they've been stoned for 40 years. Maybe 45 years, every day. And then sometimes I wonder, I'm not judging them, but I'm thinking, wow, how would their life been different if they weren't stoners? Some people really messed them up. And then they go off into harder drugs, class. I'm not judging these things. <clears throat> I've read essays about these things. Did you rebel against uh, authority? Breaking curfew. Did you learn anything from your actions? See, that's what the hope in life is, is, that when we make mistakes, we can learn from them. Class, did you ever succumb to peer pressure? Ask yourself that. What were the results of going along with the crowd? What did you learn? Peer pressure. Maybe someone peer pressured you into having sex <clears throat> when you didn't want to have it. Can you tell me about that night? Can you drop us into that situation? Maybe you weren't ready. 
Maybe you wanted to be in love and it didn't work out that way. Peer pressure. Someone peer pressured you to drink when you, you thought you shouldn't be drinking and you drank and you got in trouble. Or someone peer pressured you to do cocaine or some other illegal activity. I've read these sort of essays. I've read some good ones. <clears throat> what was the result of going along with the crowd? What did you learn? One of the great things about getting out of high school is that a lot of that stuff ends. When we get out of high school, we have freedom to become more ourselves. Class, ask yourself this. Did you ever regard a person in a certain way and then have to change your opinion of him or her? Maybe you had an aunt or uncle that you looked up to and then you found out that they robbed a liquor store. An aunt or uncle that you lived up, looked up to and then you find out they were a heroin addict, an OD'd on heroin. Or maybe, <clears throat> <coughs> excuse me, there was a teacher you looked up to school, in school and then you find out that teacher was having an affair with one of the students' class. Did you ever regard a person in a certain way and then have to change your opinion of him or her? Maybe it was a family member. Can you write about it? Can you write about finding out why you had to change your opinion of him or her? Class, did you ever have to choose between two equally attractive alternatives? How might your life have been different if you'd chosen differently? Right? get an offer to two or three different schools and you go to this one school. Someone tells you you need to stay in town, but you have an offer to go to Cornell or Brown or Columbia. How might it have been different? Got a scholarship here, but you went here. Those are both positive things. And then class, we don't know, you know, the road of life. We take these turns, you know. We've already taken a bunch of them. And then we continue. Well, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to do it that way. And we go, we go through life like this, you know, making different decisions. Having sometimes attractive uh, possibilities, maybe sometimes not so attractive possibilities. Sometimes we find out that our failures can be sometimes our greatest victories. We have a failure, but it spawns us to work harder. It spawns us to go into, spurs us to go in another direction. Class, have you ever been appalled by witnessing an act of prejudice or insensitivity? What did you learn? Do you wish you would have done something different? I've read some good essays on this class. One of the reasons I like El Paso is it doesn't have some of the intensities that some of the other cities do in America, right? Um, Detroit, Chicago, Los Angeles aspects of New York. I'm not putting down any of these places, but some of the places can be pretty intense in regards to uh, aspects of uh, race issues. Can you write about that, class? We're pretty, uh, we got a pretty good scene here in El Paso, I believe. And then, um, you know, insensitivity can run in all sorts of directions. Never forget that. You know, never forget that. Sometimes people get beat up for different things. Sometimes white boys can get beat up in the neighborhood. The wrong color. Sometimes an African-American person. Yeah, sometimes you'd be a Chicano. Hopefully, my prayer and hope is for all of you that none of you ever have to deal with that stuff. But if you do, it's life. You could write about it. Class. Now, how about this too, class? How about powerful first? About powerful things that could have happened to you. Good things. Like in high school. I'll never forget, quite a few years ago, a young woman wrote an essay for me about <clears throat> making the varsity cheerleading team. And she was at Riverside. And she had worked and worked and worked. Here's the essay. Gave us the details of the work. And then I remember it like it was yesterday. The uh, teacher said she was going to post on the gym door. The gym 
the girls Jim Dore are going to post who made the, the, the team, the cheerleading team, squad. And in the essay, she's walking towards it. And she's telling the reader what's going through her mind, what sort of day it was, details. And then she made it. Oh, it's a good essay. It's a good essay, class. How about the day that you were playing football and you won homecoming? Maybe you didn't have the best season, but your team won homecoming. Could you write about that, class? I've watched a lot of high school football games and basketball games since I've been in El Paso. Since, you know, I got a 21-year-old daughter and an 18-year-old son. I've gone to their games. I was going to go to Jefferson tonight, but I don't know. I don't know if my son's going to play. He missed a practice, so. But there's not a lot left, and I've gone to a lot of his games, and then, you know, it's going to be over. So I try and go as many as I can because he's a senior. And you talk about that. You know, maybe the, the day you were playing basketball and you made that layup. Or you made that clutch shot that won your team a game. Or maybe you have a talent as a, as a musician and you made all regional. Or that you really nailed a piece on the saxophone or on the guitar. Or that, you know, I don't know, maybe... One of your videos went went viral on a music song you did. Or, you know, got a bunch of likes. Or, you know, you're doing your thing. And you realize you have a talent for it. Piano. Singing. Mariachi band. The night, you know, you knew you hit it when you won a mariachi uh, competition or a dance competition. Uh, those are intense, class. It happened to me. You know, I, I'm a musician, too. I've gigged. I was gigging in high school, playing in a punk band, you know, playing in other bands too. Um, could you write about that? How about the first time class you had a spiritual experience? I'll read about it. You said that you found Jesus Christ in a vision or in an occurrence. Can you write about it? Yes. You felt that you had a vision of the Virgin Mother, Mother of all sorrows, Este Madre de la Guadalupe. You could write about it. Maybe something happened in, in the church, Catholic Church. Maybe something happened with one of the Santoses. Maybe it came in a dream. You felt the presence of God. You could write about that. Or... Maybe it was with Buddha. Or maybe it was in some shamanistic ritual. Maybe it was in Hinduism. Maybe it was in some aspect of the Quran, the Muslim. But why? Spirits, why? Maybe it was in a Native American sweat lodge. Maybe it happened to you out in the desert. It's one of the reasons I love this area. Strange things can happen in the desert. You can write about it. I'll read it. You know, sometimes it's at some schools, you know, that say, you know, we don't believe in that sort of thing. I believe in the realm of the spirit. I'm why. I stay wide open. What do I know? I don't know much. You tell me you had a vision with Jesus. Some call him Jesus. Some call him Jesus. Some call him Jesus. Some call him Jesus. I'll read about it. You had a spiritual experience when you were confirmed? I'll read about it. You felt the Holy Spirit enter your life and you were speaking in time? I'll read about it. May not be for everyone, but hey, the <clears throat> in this world and time, you can find spirit. My hat's off for, or to you. I won't judge it. First time, class. First time you felt love. Two years ago, a student wrote an essay for me. It was before the pandemic. He was an older gentleman in my class. Not that old. About 35. And yeah, kind of a challenging life. But the biggest love affair he ever had in his life was with his dog. And he wrote about the night that dog died. I was almost crying. He dropped us in class. That dog. 
beautiful essay. You can have love for an animal. Maybe you had a uh, first time you were out in nature and you felt the power of nature, right? I had a student about four years ago <clears throat> write a really good essay about um, being a surfer in Mexico. He'd gone down to Mexico. He'd done some surfing, spent her summer down there, and then uh, he caught a big wave. It's a good essay, man. He'd been working. Wave came in and he hit it, right? Surfing's intense. Maybe something with skateboarding. Maybe someone told you, asked you, they maybe somebody asked you and asked you if they, you wanted to marry them. Can you capture that night? Plus, maybe for, for the young women or women in general, when you had, had a baby, if you've ever had one, to find out you were pregnant. Once again, what, what, what's, is that a good thing, a bad thing at the time? Who knows? Or that when you did have a baby, good or bad, you know, whatever. The one thing that's so beautiful Many things beautiful about uh, being a woman and being able to have a baby is that men can't do it. No matter how empathetic a man is and tries, man can't have a baby. So that's that's a whole other realm, you know. And, and I try and understand it and be an empathetic and be a sympathetic man. I don't know what it's like to have a baby. I know what it's like to be a father. That's for sure. And be a husband. That's for sure. I don't know how to be a mother. Class, you could write about that. Class, was there ever a moment in your life when you decided you wanted to reform? To adopt a whole new outlook on life. How would you characterize your attempt? Successful, unsuccessful, laughable, painful? That's that's the power class sometimes. A person say, you know what? I want to change. I've had people tell me before that people don't change. And I always say BS. I know people can change. Because I've changed in my life. I've seen other people change. I've had students write essays about wanting to change, and community college is a great place to change. They want to change. What do they want to change? I don't know. One time, about four years ago, I had a young woman in my office. She said, Mr. Welsh, I'm tired of being fat. She goes, I'm out of shape. Blood pressure's up. Way overweight. I want to there's a time, can I write my essay, when, when, when I changed, when I was able to change. I said, yeah, you can. You can do it again, class. Maybe you, you try to quit smoking. A lot of people don't smoke anymore. A lot of the kids do. I was watching my son and daughter they're vaping and stuff like that. I was like, you know, the hell with the vaping. Go get yourself a pack of Marlboros, Paul Malls, or Bel Airs, or Cools, or Salem's. I'm just joking. I'm not advocating that. But they want to quit. Can you write about it? Or a person class, one of the classics is someone who, you know, wants to quit drinking and tries. Quit drinking isn't hard unless it's a problem and you're an alcoholic. Then it can be hard, class. I was reading the other day the big uh, Venom actor, Tom Hardy, who's 40 now. I saw him in Peaky Blinders. He's been in a lot of good movies. English actor. And I was reading an interview with him in Esquire. And he said, drinking, quitting drinking isn't a problem. The problem he has, he said, is staying quit. But he quit when he was 25 and he's now 40. That's 15 years of kicking ass in life and being sober. Class. You could write about that. I've had students before tell me, Mr. Welsh, I'm 
partying too much. I'm doing too much cocaine. I'm running the streets. There was a time where I cut it out. So you can cut it out again. Can I write an essay about it? Yes, you can write an essay about it. Let us know. Be good to yourself, class. Always good to yourself and kind. Change is hard. Change is hard. I've over the years had to try and be kind to myself too. I'm not always that kind to myself. Get real mean with myself, but I gotta say, hey man, I'm a work in progress too. If you're telling your students to be kind to themselves, you be kind to yourself, Mr. Rowe. If you're gonna tell your students to write, you write, which I do every day. Still trying to come up. Class. Very good. So that's it. <clears throat> that's it. Now, so good luck with these. Write, have some fun, follow the format. You know what you need to do. There's another thing I had you on here. Yeah, so we talked about the deadlines. I've also, on my last memo, which just went out like two days ago. I told you that I'd given you the last of the handouts. Read those handouts. Get in there. Write your essay. Oh, there was one other thing I wanted to do, and I will do. I got time. Class. Make the deadline. Draft, revise, edit. Draft, revise, edit. Draft, revise, edit. Draft, revise, edit. Get it to the writing center. Make those deadlines of February 9th. For my hybrid class, February 15th. Let's let's finish up with this today, class. So you, you know, get in and you got some time. But time slips away. You know, make that deadline. I had a student two days ago write me and said, Mr. Welsh, I'm real busy. I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm doing this, I'm working, I'm doing... I said, you know, I wrote her back. And so far, I haven't done any work in your class at all. I'm so busy. It's always the same. It almost sounds to me like you're too. she's too busy for English 1301. So I let her know. You're too busy. Drop my class. Because this class is going to take work. You can do it. But already you're behind. You can't get caught up. But you're, you're, you don't even know what's going on. But I was kind. I'm always kind. You know, I said, it's all there on Blackboard. I've got the memos. I've got the handouts. I've got the lectures. It's your job to pick it up. I hope she can get it together. If not, it's all right. Don't beat yourself up. You're so busy. You may be too busy for English 1301. And if you are, it's all right. Drop the class. Take it another semester when you're not so busy. Right? Right? All right. <clears throat> Class. Memoirs. Page 179 on the final handout I gave you. <clears throat> Often used techniques you can find in fiction writing. Scene setting. Ask yourself, can I drop, am I going to drop us into a scene? Annie Diller did. In Pittsburgh. Out in that street where they hit that dude in the head with a snowball. And then him chasing them. We were there. Gary Soto in the beautiful essay, Black Hair. He has different scenes in that. But boy, they're so greatly portrayed. The tire factory, man. We feel like we're there. We're also with him when he falls asleep in that car. Another little scene in there when he's on the beach and... Santa Monica, you know, trying to wash himself. Class, that was a journey of discovery, 17. On that journey, class. I'm watching my son do it right now. I'm watching my son do it right now the past few years. That journey to becoming a man. I was trying to be gentle with him. It's a tough journey. It was for me. Hard. Hard journey. Hard can be tough. I'm trying to give him love, trying to give him support. You know, and get mad at him at times. But it's challenging. 
You know, it gets better when you get a little older. Toughest years of my life, 16, 17, 18, 19, 2021, I was coming out of it, right? So that journey now, also for the young women, I'm sure that journey can be a bit challenging too, but I don't know because I'm not a woman. I know that my wife has talked to me about that journey, right? And then the journey through life, class. Gary Soto does a beautiful job. He's in, we see those characters in the tire factory. We see those characters when he goes away to that home, the house that he drops in at. We feel him sleeping in that car. And then he says, boom, you know. We get the sense, too, that his time in Southern California is pretty much up. That he's going to go home. He didn't even tell us where home is, but we know it's not there. For him, it was Fresno, California, Central Valley. I'd say he's a good few years old. Things have changed, but still those places are there, class. He's a good writer. Good writer. Do I want you to be Gary Soto? No. Do I want you to be Andy Dillard? No. Do I want you to be me? No. I want you to be yourself. That's the journey. You'll be on the rest of your life, right? You can learn from all these people. I have. I've learned from hundreds of writers. And then still, when the day is done, I got to be me, right? Trying to be as individualistic. You be you. Class. Remember, I often use the techniques 179 in this handout that I gave you. You can find in fiction writers, scene setting, set the scene. Description of people. Describe them. Action and dialogue. So each of your memoirs is going to have dialogue. Someone talking. Someone talking, it drops us into the scene. These techniques enable <clears throat> memoirs like fiction writers to recreate the past in vivid and convincing detail. Designing a memoir like fiction writing involves decisions about the type of amount of detail you need to make your recreation of the past memorable to readers. So we all do it differently and you get to do it differently. How are you going to lay on the sentences? And once again, you want to make it memorable to the readers. Bullet point one, scene setting. Use vivid and specific description to set the scene. Name particular objects. Give details about places and things. Use description and detail to establish mood. Detail, detail, detail. Drop us in, right? Gary Soto does. Annie Dillard does. Details, right? Uh, let's have them. Right? God, Gary Soto's got a lot of details of those characters that are, that are uh, at the... Valley Tire Factory. The white dudes that he calls rednecks that are trapped. The Mexican-American dudes. The Mexican nationals. The African-Americans. Everybody's kind of working at the Valley Tire Factory. We need tires, but they're all pretty much uneducated folks working a job. Doesn't mean no one's better. But the reason you're at college and the reason you're in my class and what I want from you is so you don't have to be 50 and repairing tires full time. I'm not judging that. But you're in college. And that's where we can get, you know, uh, jobs that, you know, don't hurt us so bad when we get older. Description of people. Use description of people's appearances. Highlight their personalities in your memoir. Describe the clothes they are wearing. Give details about a person's physical presence, gestures, facial features, hairstyles. Notice personal habits. Use description and detail to establish character. How are you going to do it? It's up to you. How are you going to lay it on? It's up to you. Sometimes one or two sentences can be enough. Your essays are 700 to 1,000 words. Get in, get out. Hit it and quit it. 
700 to 1,000 words. Dialogue. Put words in your character's mouths that reveal their personalities. Invent dialogue as best as you can that is faithful to people's ways of speaking. <coughs> Excuse me, even if you don't use their exact words, you dialogue to establish relationship class, the relationship between characters. Right? When you're writing it down, you know, write down these rough drafts, getting those words class on the page as best as you can. We're entering that realm of possibilities. Class action. Put the characters in your memoir in motion. Use narrative to tell about something that happened. Use narrative to develop characters and reveal the theme of your memoir. And then once again in the end, you let us know what you learned. So on this journey of discovery class that we're in, uh, once again in English uh, 1301. So that's it. We know about your deadlines we know about what's coming up what you need to do class if you have a question ever uh, as you can see so far this semester I get back to students usually 48 hours sometimes quicker um, but the main thing is get in there and and once again class read all the handouts do all of the homework watch these when you watch these lectures, take notes, right? Notes, 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 notes. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Is so you can go back to them when you draft, you know. Notes, 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 notes. Doesn't it have to be fancy paper? Doesn't it have to be fancy inks like Mr. Welsh uses? That's my thing. It's my thing in life. The fancy pens and the fancy inks, right, once again. Where one notes, 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 getting it down, getting those words on the pages. Once again, this is where the illumination comes in. Once again, we talked about it before. We're in English 1301, just to take English 1301, but we're also in class. Once again, how to improve our writing for college level. Uh, once again, college level writing, but also class, also to further the question of, look at this color. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's a little thing. It's a wild animal. It's an ape from Japan. You see the you can cut, get the right. See the color of that? Oh uh, yeah, that's a watercolor and ape from Japan, the Sailor Pen Company class. It's pretty. But once again, who am I? What am I? Well, I don't know. Community college is a good place to find out. The memoir is a good place to find out, right? So, uh, excellent class. So, I'll look forward to seeing those. And like I promised, I'll give you a correctly formatted essay. And then remember, I'm here to help, class. I'm here to help. And, and we'll take this uh, one day at a time. I look forward to you making those deadlines for me. And after those come in, we'll start moving on to the next major <clears throat> essay this semester. We're not there yet, but we'll be moving there. We just take this one day at a time. So good luck with your drafts. Have some fun, class. Remember that you be you. Uh, and wherever you are in the language, give yourself permission to be there and permission to improve, just like I have to still, after all these years, give myself permission to come on. Larry, you took another rejection, but you're going to go on. You published 13 books, but you're going to go on. Have you made a lot of money as a writer? No, but you're still doing it, man. You're still hitting, still trying to improve, just like your students. Right? Just like you're still trying to come up in life, just like your students. You're mainly a estudiante in Espanol, a student. Not, not, not just a professor de inglés. But a student, a student, just like your students, you're still learning, you're still trying to learn, you're still learning to be a man, to be a father, to be a writer, to be a husband, to be a spiritual creature. 
class with that said very good i'm gonna let you go then to get back to your work as the irish always say good luck good luck good luck class i hope you have a <clears throat> wonderful evening be good to yourself be kind to yourself during the pandemic and i look forward to reading your work class have a great afternoon